Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is September 19th, and right now we are looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. You can see our next frontal system is out here over the Gulf of Alaska. It's going to eventually be rolling in here as we go on in through Saturday and Sunday. We'll take a look at those details, but in the meantime as well, we've got some thunderstorm activity trying to move up across some of the Oregon Cascades in eastern Oregon over the next couple days as well. We'll take a look at those details. We'll take a look at the extended forecast as always as we go through the video here today and let's dive into things so here we are right now let's make sure that it's updated there are a couple dense fog advisories for some of the coastal areas but it doesn't really intrude too far inland some nice sunny skies out there as well and i'll put this into motion a little bit here today and kind of see that moisture trying to creep up towards oregon here and also the next frontal system, you can see the initial stages of it way off to the coast here. It doesn't look too smoky out there right now. There is some smoke around, but no big plumes of it moving around the region as we speak. So here's the high resolution rapid refresh. So if we go through the morning today, you can kind of see the Bear Gulch fire still producing some smoke, the Sugarloaf fire out there pushing some smoke out as well. And then as we go on through the day Saturday, it looks like things clear up a bit for the Seattle Metro, but some of this smoke is still getting pushed across portions of eastern Washington as we go through saturday and on into portions of sunday as well but it does look like it, it's on the improvement here and that frontal system will be swinging through dropping some precipitation for some of the area we'll go over those amounts here in a moment and see what kind of impacts we can expect and you can still get one of these in time for the fall season it, it actually they ship them pretty quick it only takes a couple days to get here but click on the link down below to save 10 percent off very fun weather station you will not regret it best station for the price no doubt now if anybody is in tohola out there anybody watching the channel channel in Tohola, let me know. I'll get you a weather station out there. Also, maybe if you guys want to spring for one out in Moclip, Sunset Beach, Pacific Beach, Seabrook, Ocean Grove, Iron Springs, Copalis, let me know. Um, or just go ahead and order one. But if anybody, I know it's a, a little bit of a more poor community out there in Tohola. So if anybody calls me from there, I'll work on getting you a weather station, but you got to live out there. So let me know. Also, maybe a little push there as well. Hopefully can, somebody can order one because you can see we got the metro areas covered pretty well. But it, even if you, you know, zoom in on the area, you can still see it, it's still very fun to have one of these at your place of residence. But yeah, I like to look at these weather stations. And when we have thunderstorms, I try to pinpoint some of these stations that are picking up some of the lightning strike activity out there but yeah anyway good to see looks like we're covering a lot of the pacific northwest there now i'll look at it 500 millibar heights this is uh 18 000 feet 500 millibars and you can see the frontal system on sunday swinging through so that's our next shot for some decent rain and we'll take a look at some of the totals here as per usual these totals are going to be fluctuating in the forecast right up until the time of the event and then we get kind of another little ridge building in there and then another trough tries to take a swing right there across portions of western bc tries to flatten out this ridge a little bit and we'll take a look at that and we'll look at the extent of forecast a little bit more here in a moment but let's look at the precipitation here so as we go through the day today you can see some of these thunderstorms firing up potentially across some of the oregon cascades it doesn't show anything across the washington cascades and you can also see this frontal system bringing some of this heavier rainfall in towards western bc portions of northern vancouver island as we go through the day on saturday now here we are in through saturday night just starts to clip the northwest washington coastline there vancouver island some areas could get targeted pretty heavily some areas getting up over two inches just in a six hour period on the european it impacts the olympic peninsula as well but you notice the front is losing steam as it moves across some of western washington in towards western oregon cascades and you see it doesn't bring much precipitation at all really east of the mountains there and with some gusty winds we got some blowing dust concerns on the day saturday especially and maybe on sunday as well and then we squall off in towards the end of this run here and you can kind of see we dry out a little bit after that frontal system but looking at the north american model this is a high resolution model if we scroll through here you can kind of see vancouver island starting to feel the impacts as we go through the day saturday starts to impact northwest washington late saturday night and then that precipitation starts to roll across but some of the puget sound here but there's also going to be some strong rain shadowing going on really close to downtown seattle better amounts across SeaTac, tacoma and olympia but look at that rain shadowing signal there just off to the north and east of the olympic mountains pretty typical with these frontal systems and then we'll see what's going to happen after that but you can see it's also losing some of its punch as it moves across some of the willamette valley here as well maybe just very light precipitation amounts east of the cascades expected with this frontal system now total precipitation in inches this is the ensemble mean last night this is the average of all 50 ensemble members we take each one of those ensemble members and we tweak the initial conditions to try to correct for our errors in them 
our misunderstandings in the initial conditions of the atmosphere and you got to give us a clear picture on what is likely to happen not a bad day for seattle there by the time we get towards sunday afternoon it shows four tenths of an inch of rain and some decent amounts across the olympics better again across vancouver island and places north and uh, portland maybe a couple tenths of an inch here some of the uh, oregon coast maybe up towards a half an inch much less east of the mountains and there is again going to be some strong rain shouting to the northeast of the olympic mountains as well so we scroll off a little bit further and you can see not much rain after that through the six day period but there's probably more to come after now daily two meter max temperature get out there enjoy it today look at that seattle mid 70s nice and comfortable portland into the mid 80s maybe pretty warm east of the mountains as well we go through saturday again a pretty nice day in advance of that frontal system but by the time we get towards sunday see seattle cooling off southwest bc a lot of the region cooling off as this frontal system swoops across the area and then we go monday tuesday maybe bounce and back some of those temperatures there for western oregon as we go on into the early portion of next week we won't put too much stock in that just yet though now a little bit of a look at the extended forecast this is an artificial intelligence model and if we scroll through here there goes sunday's frontal system pushing through the region a bit of a ridge starts to rebuild in the wake of it and we get a weak frontal system moving across western bc flattening out that ridge a bit and then the gulf of alaska trough really gets established there according to the artificial intelligence and this could be pointing some heavier rain at portions of western bc and maybe in, even including portions of washington and how far south will that precipitation get well, good question but you know the forecast is going to change we, we don't want to get caught up in the details too much but it continues to show this gulf of alaska trough get rolling there through the extended forecast and if you go way off into fantasy land you get kind of a, a trough swinging through there across a bc maybe a bit of a breeze with that one as well and then kind of off and on ridges and troughs as we go off into the extended forecast kind of a cooler signal showing up there at the beginning of october now if we take a look here at the precipitation with that there's sunday's frontal system there we dry out for a couple days but you see kind of an atmospheric river pointed at western bc as we go through next week and vancouver island that one doesn't look like it has what it takes to bring much to western washington or oregon maybe a little bit of precipitation reaching the area but then the gulf of alaska trough gets going in another atmospheric river pointed somewhere at the pacific northwest washington bc looks to be favored under this regime and then you can kind of see it hanging out for a bit there so maybe as we go through the end of next week and towards next week and we'll start to get into a rainier period here you can kind of see it hanging out across the region look at that robust frontal system pushing down across western washington into western oregon way off into fantasy land there as well now this is all the way out 15 days you can see the big amounts across western bc better amounts across western washington versus western oregon but kind of a sharp cutoff there so again we'll be watching that to see if this uh, extended forecast this active weather and the return of the precipitation some more fall weather is going to actually occur so uh, national weather service uh, spokane put this out this was uh, yesterday and this applies for saturday and sunday afternoon and evening areas of visibility one mile or less possible in some of these these areas of blowing dust you can see uh, i-90 395 highway 2 so watch out for that blowing dust out there if you're out and about we've got some gusty winds rolling in here and i'll show you what i mean so right now we got northerlies down the okanagan river valley that is a cold air conduit and when we get further into the season from the interior of british columbia same thing with the fraser river valley there you see got northwest and north winds coming down uh, the coastal areas we got north winds again through the puget sound down through the willamette valley we put this into motion and we go on in through the day today and you see the westerly start to return as we go through tonight down the strait of Juan de Fuca a little bit of a breeze there associated with that starts to pick up a little bit here as we go towards the midnight hour you see the westerly start to return a bit to the east slopes of the cascades of oregon washington and then we scroll on in through saturday you see the wind increase across some of the eastern washington look at that as we go on in through saturday night and then we go on in towards sunday you see the strait of juan de fuca there again the westerly surge coming down straight to georgia getting that northwest wind so yeah saturday and sunday gusty winds east of the mountains as well with the blowing dust potential associated with that and watch out mariners across the strait of juan de fuca as we head towards this weekend we're going to get that strong westerly surge i shouldn't say strong but moderate now six to ten day temperature outlook here we go most of the lower 48 including the west coast still shows above normal take that with a grain of salt same thing here with the six to ten day precipitation and eight to 14 day yeah take that with a grain of salt as well so anyway check out the patreon page if you like otherwise click like and subscribe hope you guys are having a good day otherwise and i will talk to you guys again tomorrow